Alexia? <laughs> Greetings from Solar Scully and welcome back to Resident Evil Code Veronica and we once again have to deal with the Bandersnatch. And uh, since we pretty much dealt with most of them before, again, it's still a bit of a threat, but uh, there is also something I want to bring up about the Bandersnatch as a creature, because uh, looking into a bit of uh, trivia here, you want to know what the Bandersnatch basically is? I don't think I might have mentioned this before, but I mean, the canonical reason why the Bandersnatch even exists is because tyrants cost too much money. So, yeah, if any Umbrella employee has a Bandersnatch on hand, it's because, well, it's the tyrant on a budget. That's why its arm is very stretchy and floppy, as opposed to having big musels of spaghetti strength. But, uh, anyway, you might be noticing that this part is excessively short compared to the average run-through of Rockford Island, and, uh, there is a bit of a reason for that. Uh, basically, you're gonna know when it happens when you see the, uh, pasted clip, but, uh, yeah, recording difficulties. They happen. So, uh, unfortunately, what we do happen to lose out on in this, uh, run-through is the Albanoid fight. Well, fight in quotation marks, there is a bit of a point I want to make about that, but, uh, yeah. I mean, in the meantime, though, we're getting some Bogon bots from just up here, which we couldn't get as clear because nowhere to push the box, but, yeah. Again, due to recording difficulties, no Albanoid encounter, and, uh, yeah, you won't really know where the second Clement mixture is, although, if you remember all the way back to, uh, when we were playing as Steve, that's pretty much where you find it, as well as a place to modify the handgun for Chris, so, uh, yeah, he gets a more powerful handgun, uh, you find the Clement mixture in there, and basically, jobs are goodin'. Again, you're really not missing all that much in the grand scheme of things, like, I mean, the... And to talk about the Albanoid fight, again, for the time that we have, again, it's... You don't technically have to fight it, because, I mean... Again, you saw in the previous part that the emblem basically fell into a pool of water, and again, the Albanoid escaped in close scenario, and basically, well, it grew up in a very short amount of time into this giant-looking mutated salamander thing. And, well, ostensibly, it's, uh... Well, it electrocutes the water, and basically, as Chris, you either have the choice of killing it, or, you know, just jumping into the water, uh, tanking a bit of damage, and then just picking up the emblem and leaving as if nothing ever happened. Again, on a lot of previous playthroughs, I've usually tried to kill it, but again, as of recently, I just thought, fuck it. Dive into the water and, uh, go pick it up. So again, I do apologize that you won't be seeing it, but, uh, if nothing else, and again, something I did kind of allude to last part, like, I mean, this might actually influence me to make a bonus video showing off Code Veronica Rex, so again, I mean, not right now, obviously, but... Again, at some point in the future, and again, it is going to be inevitable, because, it, because you know, this is my favourite Resident Evil game and all that. But yeah, I might just pick up Code Veronica Rex again, uh, show off some of the alternate Wesker cutscenes, I guess maybe uh, read some of the, res the Wesker reports if I can find it anywhere, and, uh, well, show off the missing segment of gameplay that you didn't get to see during this run-through, so, uh, you're gonna get some bang for your buck in seeing some differences. At least when the bonus video eventually happens. By the way, this is the area where the, uh, red bat hunters show up, and they are fucking annoying. Again, I don't know how many spice it takes before you get poisoned, I think it could even be just one, really, but, uh, yeah, they're annoying, hit hard, and, uh, well, they suck. But in the meantime, though, again, putting aside, you know, collecting the emblem and all that, we also basically need to, well, uh, raise the bridge so we can get to a specific area that we need to go. And again, this game also does introduce a few, uh, new mainstay enemies that I think the Resident Evil remake ends up taking a bit of credit for, but, uh, no, they actually came from Code Veronica, and we'll be seeing who they are in a little bit. But, uh, in the meantime, yeah. It's pretty much just a case of just doing the reach around to get the Navy Proof seals, obviously. But at the same time, though, uh, a little something different, and mainly a more advanced version of what Chloe was doing before. Uh, in terms of raising the bridge, at least, because there is a very specific puzzle that you'll be seeing quite soon. To a DVD near you. Uh, let's see what else I can discuss. But I can't discuss anything, because it's all wrapped in mystery. Well, again, I guess maybe I could possibly talk about Wesker as well. The only thing to really say about him here, and his only real appearance, is basically just to say that Claire's already left the island, and, uh, well, he's afraid of Alexia. Which, uh, again, I think that fear is slightly lessened when, uh, the Code Veronica Rex version of the cutscenes happen, because they try to make him all cool and suave, and... I, I guess maybe they somewhat knew what they were doing with, with um, Wesker's character by that point, since, uh... 
Again, Resident Evil 4 puts him in the position of Ada's commander, then Resident Evil 5 makes him like, oh yes, complete global saturation. And you know, all that jazz, so... Uh, who knows, really. Uh, Code Veronica Wesker, at least specifically for the Dreamcast version, is like... A bit of a mixture between like his Resident Evil 1 incarnation and what he'd eventually become, like in the sense that he's competent like he would be in later games, but at the same time he also has that degree of, uh, well, nominous that he had in Resident Evil 1, which, uh, and, I mean, and by that I specifically mean the original uh, Resident Evil 1, like the PlayStation version. The very same game where he, in Chris's scenario when you look at the timer and Chris lost him, he goes like, Chris, stop it. It's really cool, you guys. Come on, I'll tell my mom on you. Yeah, but anyway, I'm just padding for time, really. Anyway, since the island was blown to shit, basically, now you have to solve an oil puzzle to get the bridge back in check and, well, uh, access the area which you would have otherwise accessed the plane, but, uh, yeah, you can't anymore. One of the shells is cracked, and basically, it's just a game of kind of finagling with the oil pressure to, well, get the puzzle right, really. It's not quite as complex as it might seem, I mean... Again, it's kind of a puzzle I can actually like and similar to the, well, I guess basically a less dangerous version of the uh, Corto puzzle from Knights of the Old Republic in the sense that you're basically trying to get the right numerical value to, well, uh, match the tank in number 10. It does involve, uh, you know, flushing and, you know, adding the right amount of chemicals, and again, unlike in Knights of the Old Republic 1, uh, basically you don't get penalized for fucking up or, well, killed by a giant shark. So, uh, yeah. Ain't that something. And again, as you'd expect, the moment you complete the puzzle, zombies will rise from the grave and try to attack you. Not really much else to say. Although, I guess, uh, slightly Resident Evil related as well, uh, yeah, the trailer for the Resident Evil live-action movie, uh, Welcome to Raccoon City, came out not too long ago, that time of recording, so, uh, yeah, it looks interesting. I mean, I have, I, ha I know the trailer's out now, I haven't seen it myself, but again, I have seen a few set photos, and, uh, Gotta say, aside from like a few fan nitpicks that a lot of people have uh, kind of over exaggerated, as fans usually tend to do with the oh no, ruined forever, you know, at least in regards to some of the casting, gotta say, it actually looks pretty on point, at least from a design perspective. Well, except for the fact that I didn't give Wesker his glasses, because, uh, I don't know, I guess maybe they're saving that for the future or something or other. Whatever, the point is, is that the uh, new live action Resident Evil movie that I think is due out on. Uh, October, uh, November 24th or 25th? Looks promising, and I plan to go see it. I mean, honestly, I don't really have much to say about it, because I'm pretty much planning on... Uh, I'm pretty much just going to judge the movie when I see it for myself. I don't want to uh, spoil anything else about it. For, uh, at least in regards to, you know, I actually go off and see it. It seems fun, I think. Possibly. Who knows? I mean, I know it is heavily based on the remakes rather than the originals, but... I don't know. I'm willing to give it a chance. And, uh, I'm just gonna be curious as to what the rest of the reaction is. Apart from very, uh, well, vestigial comments about, you know, certain aspects of the design and, uh, the way characters look and shit. But in any case, now that the bridge is back, now we can finally resume with a very specific enemy type. That, uh, we have to get to. Death Plath is just so barren without the plane. And yes, of course, just to make your day a little bit harder, we have a hunter hunting Chris. Bum, 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 bum. Actually, uh, there is actually a bit of a discrepancy with the zombie. Oh, discrepancy? No, a bit of a difference with the zombies here. You might be noticing a little. Uh, well, not <laughs> right now, but uh, you might be noticing a little something on their back. And, uh, well, it's pretty much an explosive, so, uh, yeah. Shoot that, zombies explode. It's usually best to do it when uh, in an area that's crowded, but. Yeah, that's pretty much what these soldier zombies are here for. And uh, as we'll be seeing in a little bit once we come back inside this room, they will be quite different. <laughs> but anyway, deactivate the power because we no longer need to access a plane that no longer exists, and of course we can get the Navy uh, uh, proof seals. And again, just uh, make sure you take out the hunter because it really it is an annoying gnat that must be squished. Yeah, of course, jobs are good. So, again, make sure you have plenty of item space, because, uh... Yes, they take up a rather lengthy chunk of your inventory. So one. A two. Come on, don't make a layout to me. A three. A three. Man, what a excellent find. Certainly not tedious in the least. 
By the way, there is actually no ammo in the uh, hunter cages, uh, much to my chagrin. But yes, now we are introduced to the Crimson Heads. Again, basically the difference between Crimson Heads and regular zombies is that, well, basically they're faster, take a lot more punishment, and, uh, yeah, kind of used to greater effect in the Resident Evil remake, because, uh, that game did actually include a mechanic where you basically had to burn the bodies before they turned into Crimson Heads, otherwise you would have had a much uh, more difficult second half of the game. But again, uh, just to at least establish it, Co Veronica did introduce them first, so, uh, na 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 na. But again, uh, Crimson Heads are also like a stage of zombie, like, I mean, I think it goes like a human infected uh, zombie, uh, then uh, Crimson Head, then Licker, I think. Or it might be a hunter, I might be getting one of those mixed up, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's a liquor in terms of the stage of the T-virus infection, but I might be completely off base with that. So, uh, anyways, let's just continue more with item management, the game. And let's see if I've got anything more to say, which I don't. I mean, there are things I can talk about, but a lot of it's more relevant to this section's coming up, and of course with the, uh, well, when we complete this loathsome little area. That being said, though, uh, again, it is actually kind of good to keep the grenade launcher on hand at this point, because uh, not only just using it as more of a hunter buster, but at least in terms of uh, taking down some of the threats rather quickly. <laughs> My mouth is making weird noises again. Uh, I mean, that being said, though, it does kind of make the areas where you do encounter the redback hunters no more uh, aggravating, because, again, it's... I wouldn't say they're quite annoying to the same extent as something like, say, the Slopers from Silent Hill 3 or anything, it's just that it uh, gets you a little bit tense, which might have been the intent, but, uh, well, again, it just gives you a little bit of pause for a uh, thought. I mean, again, I guess they did need an enemy type to sort of replace the uh, Annelid Worm that they had before, and uh, even before that, they usually had zombie dogs out there, but again, I guess that may, may have been seen as a little bit too weak for something on disc 2, so... Eh, whatever. Now again, it's pretty much at this point where we would be, you know, uh, heading down to the lower areas of the facility, then of course encountering the Albanoi, then of course uh, getting the emblem, then of course, uh, you know, mixing the uh, Clement Alpha to Clement Epsilon, or is that meant to be a... Uh, Clement... Uh, uh, Zeta? No, I don't... I don't know my Greek symbols, or at least it's been a while since I remember what sp symbols specifically were. I'm pretty sure it's Epsilon. Or at least if it's not that, then it might be, uh, Zeta, or, uh... Eh, whatever. I don't think it's Delta. Or Theta? Ah, bugger it. Too many Grecian letters. But, uh, in any case... Uh, try as he might, the little zombie that could, cannot. But again, the only things you're missing here, battle with the Albanoid, upgraded handgun, and, uh, Clement mixture where we mix it together and get the Hellbird. Exciting as it sounds, but, uh, yeah. What's this? I'm getting some signal interference. Ladies and gentlemen, due to technical difficulties, we are unable to continue the broadcast from the Rockwell Observatory. Pathetic humans. I really feel in the mood to play Destroy All Humans again. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long while, and uh, the remake is... Pretty fun, along with the original game, so, uh, I'm a happy camper. I also heard that apparently the Destroy All Humans 2 remake is actually coming out as well, so, uh, that'd be pretty interesting, so, yeah, looking forward to that. But anyway, we've pretty much got everything we need here, so use the Hellbird and, uh, we gain access to the hangar, but what is this? There is no jet, because Alfred pretty much took the last one, but, uh, the thing about building a super weapon, as Baron Prax has always taught us, is that you must always build two. And again, you might be wondering how Chris can fly in uh, a jet plane apropos of nothing, but uh, yeah, a bit of trivia for you. Uh, before Resident Evil 1, before Chris joined Stars, he was actually in the Air Force, and uh, that's actually also how we met Barry Burton, so yeah, connection. In fact, I think it was actually Barry who got him his job in Stars to begin with, but uh, anyway. Now it's time to take to the Stars, so I'm Scholar to Scully, keep a new medal, and next time on Code Veronica, Chris is gonna go to the depths of space! We must rescue Claire. But where is she hiding? Yes, that's right. She's on the moon. Catch you dudes next time. Goodbye.